everybody, so today I want to talk to you about my baby registry tips. Looking back, I wish Mark and I would have done a few things differently, and some of these tips I got from other websites whenever we were about to go register places, and they really helped me out. And I just wanted to put those out there for anybody who's about to go register, or first time moms, or maybe you had a child but it was a really long time ago. These things I know really helped me. Excuse the mom hair, I actually filmed this video for you guys once already, but it was just really bad lighting and everything because we had a storm during it and it was just bad news so I did look cute once upon a time filming this for you guys but now I'm redoing it and also excuse me if I'm talking a little softer Sophie's napping my first and one of my biggest tips is to only register for what you need especially if you're on a budget Mark and I weren't like on a tight budget or anything but we were trying to save as much money possible for when he was off work because in the US we do not get paid paternity leaves or maternity leaves um, at least where I worked I didn't but we were trying to save money for that kind of stuff he was so tempted to like put toys and things that she was gonna need like six or seven months down the line and stuff like that on it but you know I kept saying you know if we put what we need on here that's what we'll get and then we'll really be set we won't have to worry about going back to the store and getting a whole bunch of stuff but I definitely think that you know kind of streamlining your registry and not cluttering with a whole bunch of stuff that may not be necessary right away for a newborn is the way to go. One thing that can save you a lot of money is looking into if your insurance covers a breast pump. I didn't even know that my insurance covered a breast pump and I think it was my OBGYN's office that brought it to my attention that I should check it out and see if they do. Luckily they did so I got my Medela Pump and Style Advance for free through my insurance. All I had to do was get a prescription written from my OB and I just submitted it to my insurance and they got me one. Now the insurance pumps don't normally come with all the fancy extra parts that the ones in store do but I mean you don't need all that in my opinion you can find cheaper bags you can find cheaper cooler totes and stuff like that it's not necessary to have all that extra stuff and plus even if you went out and bought all that extra stuff separately it's not gonna cost you three hundred dollars so um, yeah I would definitely look into that that can save you a ton of money Personally, next time, I'm going to skip registering for any receiving blankets. I actually only got one pack, so it's not like I had a ton or anything, and the pack only had four, but I didn't use them, really. I used them to lay down on the carpet in case I had to change her in the living room, but I mean, other than that, I didn't really use them. They were too rough to kind of, like, use on her face and stuff like that. They were too small to swaddle her in. I didn't really know what to do with them, so... I would skip the receiving blankets altogether and I would just get muslin blankets. They're really, really, really soft and they're really nice. They're also very multi-purpose, those muslin blankets. So I would definitely look into muslin blankets opposed to receiving blankets. One of the biggest things that helped us when we were registering was is that we made a list before. We made a list of exactly what we wanted to go in there for. So all we really had to do was like pick colors or things like that and that way you know, there was like no muss, no fuss. It didn't take a ton of time. I mean, it still did take three hours, which was crazy. But we did register at two stores. I don't think I said that. We registered at Target and Babies Are Us. So between the two stores, it took three hours, which is a good chunk of time. But I feel like going in there with a list, it also kind of kept us on track. It's super easy to get swept up in all this cute baby stuff. And don't get me wrong, I'm by no means saying that my registry was perfect and mine was this way and this is how yours should be. I definitely had some stuff on there that was just too cute to pass up but having a list definitely helped us and I think it was a lot easier for Mark too because you know guys step into babies are us or go down the target baby aisle and it's like whoa there's a ton of stuff and I feel like it calmed him down just seeing and being able to see that we were getting things off the list and you know it kind of it kind of helped everybody in the process my next tip is to totally skip the comforter set Personally, for me, I didn't see the point in it, and I wasn't totally for it in the first place. Also, they're really expensive. I wasn't even entirely sure how expensive they were until we were at Babies R Us and looking, and they are like crazy money. Just kind of like my thoughts on it was, is that I wasn't comfortable using the padded bumper, which, I mean, whatever you want to put in your kid's crib is your business. I'm not one to judge, but personally, I wasn't comfortable with it, so I knew I wasn't going to use it. I didn't know when she would be old enough to even use the comforter blanket because it's pretty thick or at least all the ones I saw were and then you're left with a sheet I don't know it seemed kind of silly to me 
and for as much money as they are you're gonna need tons of sheets and I would just definitely go that way since I briefly mentioned the whole bassinet thing I just wanted to put one of my biggest tips in there I would not get the regular or standard looking bassinet they were kind of expensive at least at RB Bazaar us they were like hundred and fifty dollars and what we ended up doing was going with a pack and play that had a changing station and a bassinet built into it and then once you take the bassinet option out they can sit into a higher level mattress and then you can sink it down to like the standard all the way at the bat bottom level mattress that the pack and play is normally seen with so I just felt like it was definitely something that I could grow with her I also liked that it came with a changing pad because you know in the middle of the night it just makes it a thousand times easier because it was right there all you had to do was just plop her right there we've had small bedrooms and both houses that we've been in and that pack and play fit perfectly fine with two dressers and a bed and we had a full-size closet too so it fits and it's it grows with her and i would definitely go for that also the one that we had had storage on the side which was really nice to keep diapers and wipes extra pjs because the blowouts will happen like no one's business in that young age but yeah i would definitely go with that and also i think my pack and play was actually cheaper i think i got mine for 130 dollars at target and that was the same price if not less expensive than some of the bassinets I saw babies are us so I would definitely check that out if it's important to you I would definitely register for particular diapers and wipes Mark and I spent a lot of time looking into wipes and diapers that didn't have a ton of chemicals but were still absorbent things like that we were just very particular about that we did a lot of research and we made sure to register for exactly what we wanted it's not going to completely eliminate someone getting you an off brand but for the majority it was really easy for people to see what we wanted and go out and get that so i would definitely recommend that if that's something that's important to you and i mean i guess that really goes with anything if you're really particular about you know like soaps lotions uh body washes medicines anything that you're particular about definitely register for particularly what you want because I felt like that really helped the guests at my baby shower really understand what we wanted. The rest of the stuff I'm actually going to go grab so I can show you so hold on one second and I'll be back. If I could do it over again I would totally skip the baby towels. We registered for two sets or something like that of the baby towels and they are super thin. I don't even know if you can really see through them on camera, but they're so, so thin. Like as soon as you put your kid in this, it's soaked through, it's on you. The lighting's turning really weird colors right now, so excuse that. Um, no, but if I had to do it all over again, because I got them because I thought, oh, that hood on there is so cute, you know, whatever. But honestly, doesn't even matter. Like it soaked through straight to me and it was no good so I would definitely if I could do it again I would definitely go back and I would just register for regular towels and pink or whatever because she's gonna outgrow these too she's way too big for them as they are right now so I would just redo it and register for regular pink towels or something like that whatever color you know and then along with bath time I would get a tub similar to this First of all, this is the Safety First brand, I'm pretty sure. My camera's dying, so I'm going to hurry up. But it sits like this. It sits towards you, which I loved. Also, this blue seat has a different position. You can set it up here, and it hooks in, so it's nice and safe. You can set it up here where they're more inclined when they're ready. And then you can take it out all together, and it's just this big white tub. I seriously love this thing because it grows with her. I didn't need to buy another tub after she was ready to sit up. It was perfect for when she was a newborn. It fit inside our regular tub. It was awesome. I've never had a ton of space in my kitchen. I've always had relatively small kitchens in every house that we've been in. But also, the kitchens were the only place with tile. So I would only want to feed her in the kitchen. And I didn't have a ton of space for the regular sized high chairs. So we got this Fisher Price one that just sits onto a regular chair and we love it it's so small and i can set it anywhere so if you have a small living space or anything like that definitely look into that and then before i get to my last tip this is probably my biggest tip is to go with gender neutral big stuff we did this with the pack and play with her swing with her car seat and i think i'm forgetting something else 
I can't remember. And I just remember that I didn't turn off the fan, so I'm sorry that you had to hear that the whole time. Anyways, we went with gender neutral stuff for all the big stuff. That way, if we had a boy next or anything like that, we didn't have to buy all new stuff, which I love that we did. Like, this is her car seat, the Kiko next fit. It's just black and silver. The insert, the infant insert that goes with it is just gray. And I love that I can use that for as many babies as I need to, as long as it's not expired, obviously. But yeah so i would definitely recommend that because it's gonna save you a lot of money in the long run okay so my last and final tip is to not get set on one bottle pacifier whatever it may be i had bought like six komotomo bottles because i thought my daughter was absolutely gonna love them and they didn't end up working out for me and then i bought uh, I think I bought like four of the Munchkin Latch bottles. Didn't end up working out for me. I had to go through a ton of bottles. And the same thing with pacifiers. I bought a whole bunch of the Advent uh, Soothy ones. She hated them. I tried um, Nook and I think Dr. Brown's still didn't like them. And then I think I tried Born Free. That was the last one I tried. And then we finally got to the Mam brand and that's what she loved. So don't buy in bulk of like one bottle or one pacifier or stuff like that just because you never know what your kid's gonna like. Obviously if you're a nursing mom or something like that, this isn't gonna pertain to you if you don't wanna use bottles or pacifiers. But those of you who are interested in doing that or you know you're gonna bottle feed and stuff like that, I would definitely suggest something like a variety pack where you can test certain things out or getting the binkies just in a small two pack, maybe get in a few of different brands and don't open them. Oh my gosh, don't open them. I had so many different pacifiers and I opened them all so I couldn't return them when I found found the ones that she liked. I actually came across this variety pack that's offered by the First Foods Company, and excuse me because I'm going to be looking down at my phone so I make sure I get all this information right, but it was started by an Alina Shinkar. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I'm not good with pronouncing names, but anyways, she actually started this company about six months ago because she was looking for a variety bottle pack and she couldn't find anything. So she actually started her own company to offer this, and I've talked to her a little bit and she said that she's gonna you know look into offering like a diapers a wipes a pacifier all kinds of different variety packs but as of right now the bottle one is the only one she has and real quick I'm going to read you what the variety pack comes with okay so my battery actually ended up dying and then it became sunny all of a sudden so I'm sorry if the lighting and the position and everything is off I'm gonna read you exactly what comes in the variety pack but excuse me I'm gonna be looking down at my phone it comes with a five ounce Komotomo bottle with three nipples, slow, medium, and fast flows. It comes with a Dr. Brown's four ounce glass bottle with three nipples, preemie level one and level two. It also comes with a Playtex drop-in nurser four ounce bottle and four nipples, breast-like angled full size and natural latch. It comes with a Tommy Tippy five ounce bottle and three nipples, slow, medium, and fast. And then the last bottle is an Avent natural four ounce bottle with three nipples, newborn, slow, and medium. So you get all those. And then if you go ahead and you buy it off her website, it costs $80. And that's with shipping and tax and everything included. Also, if you buy it off her website, you can use the coupon code Mama Alia fan and you will get a free Komotomo teether. I've heard excellent things about that teether, although I don't own it myself, but I've seen amazing reviews. It's also available on Amazon, but it's just a little bit more expensive just because of what Amazon charges her to post it on there. But I just think it's an excellent idea to be able to test out all those different bottles. I know it is a little bit expensive, but for those moms who are already anticipating bottle feeding, I think it's definitely a good shot. So those were all my baby registry tips. I hope that helps you guys out and I was as always, thanks for watching.